and it is live. That was live fun. coming to you with love. Let's see, I have uh -huh. some cup of joe. It's not green inside. No, wait, I can say it. I'm drinking my green juice. Okay, so we're going to have to get you a custom mug made that says your name on it, like your superpower or whatever, like your affirmation. I'm going to make affirmation t-shirts. So uh, Stephanie can make you a mug. I actually have something and I already have an image. So my friends, thank you for joining. We're starting here a little bit at a different time because we are adjusting and looking at our audience group. Some people like it early, some people like it a little bit later. But today is, what is your pickup line? What did you use to pick up your husband or your wife? <laughs> But that's the idea of what do you use to connect with your audience? And as always, my name is Carlos Vargas. I am an executive coach, an enterprise architect, entrepreneur, and I'm here with my friend, Trish Anderson. Hey, Trish. And Drayson. And Drayson. But that's okay. Sure. You know, yeah. no, that's your that's your Spanish that's your language. Yes, that's a Spanish. It's yeah. Danish, by the way. Everybody, I have to like spell it out to people. Go Andrea and then S S E N. So yes. Anyway, so, awesome to be with y'all. Today it's an awesome day. And before we start, we want to share a little bit with you that every day you have an opportunity to start fresh again. If you think about it, every day you have 24 hours and depending on how you use them, you can use them wisely or not, but at the same time, you have a renewal for next day. So every day you can do something new, something special. And with that in mind, you can actually succeed not focusing on what happened yesterday. So that's why the topic for today is What's your pickup line? Because we all interact with others. And when we were preparing for this, Trish was asking me, what was my pickup line? And I think that my pickup line when I got my wife uh, was a little bit weird. That's what she said. So I'm going with it. I don't remember what I said. What I remember is that she was laughing her head off the first time that we saw each other. Um, but when I use the pickup line, supposedly we were texting and I was, uh, we met online. So we're digital uh, millennials with a little bit of gray hair. And uh, we were texting back and forth. And one of the interesting things was that she said that I, my pickup line or what I said to her was, I'm not looking for a mom for my kid. I'm looking for someone to have fun. I don't know if that's true or not, but that, um, that was what I know that that's what, what, what was on my head. Okay. Can I just say what my, what Kurt's pickup line was? Yes. Tell me. Um, I have a boat and I need to gas it up so I can go over next to where your condo is. And if you want, we can meet up there and go for a boat ride. How's that sound? <laughs> I was in like, really? We're going to go out on the lake? Done. So. Right? <laughs> My friends, it sounds funny. It sound can sound even silly, but if you think about it, it's powerful. To interact with someone, you need to know number one, the audience and the person that you're talking to. And I make that distinction. You need to first know the audience and then the person, because if you speak to them as if they're a mass you're not going to connect. Correct. If I, if I talk to my wife and I say, well, all the women in the world, the first thing that she said, and Trish, you probably will corroborate this. No woman, when you're interacting with her, want to be compared to every other woman. Yes. You want to make her feel special. Yep. When she talks to me, I don't want to be talked to as, well, All the man in the world, this, I want to be talked to as a, I am special to her. And that in that moment, she speaks to me. If she's asking, well, will men like to do this? That's a different question. You see, you need to know the audience. And 
in, in, in what we have been talking about, if you follow what we're saying, it's very important to understand who you're trying to, number one, influence, interact, and be able to serve. Because you need to influence them first so they want to come, correct, Trish? To be yeah. able to want to, wait, he or she has something. Doesn't matter what it is. It could be a book. It could be a piece of tech. It could be a service. You're going to influence them first. Well, we got some in real estate right now. And what makes me think about um, them choosing, let's say, realtors um, or, or the to list their property is they might have had a bad experience in the past, just like dating, right? Yeah. And if they've had a bad experience with a, uh, a realtor on service, they might be more defensive to the table. So I think we have to dissect uh, their concerns and their desires. And same thing when uh, Cynthia, when you were dating her, you know, y'all had might have, we all bring, uh, we say it, but we have to hit it. I know it's, you know, not, uh, fun, entertaining, but I, I go to kind of the in, emotional side of it. We all bring baggage to the table of mm -hmm. ex past experiences. And so when we tailor our message, I believe we have to really be dialed in to, uh, what pain they might've experienced before and put their mind at ease. So let's say it was a realtor, uh, that wanted to attract more uh, buyers in the market that were, had, had gone through an experience of having their credit report run and it wasn't good because they had gone through a bad divorce and they were in shame over it. So that marketing message would have to be like, you know, there's hope in you finding your dream house. Let me help you look at all the options. So it starts putting their mind to rest. And, and I think that's some, that's the language. Of course, now, you know, if we're also working with, if, if the, it was a realtor working with, let's say, wanting to attract the, um, the first time home buyer, it might be, let me, I want to help you make your dream. Have you written down your dream list of what you would love to have in a house and then prioritize it? Let me help you write your checklist. So anyways, that's, thoughts there yeah and that's and that's key and as we doing through this my friends uh let us know where you're watching us from i see some of our friends i see tara i see emilio and if you're in our group there's a link that you can click so we can see your name while we see it here i have it i have a, a channel and some of the other people that are connecting and it's very important that you can understand the language like trish was mentioning because not all the language should be used, even though it could be correct language at all time. Let me give you an example. Um, last week I was working uh, solving some issues for a, a large network and they were having some challenges and, and I was giving them some, some help. And yesterday was Sunday and I was reviewing everything and looking at it. And when I was talking to some people, some people will understand something and other people will understand other things. So we cannot share everything. But the, the message across was, are you connecting okay? Are you stable? And everybody could understand that terminology. Mm -hmm. But when we talk to some of the other people, say, well, how is the speed working? You see? Not everybody will be able to understand that language. And, and what we're trying to say is that you need to understand how you're going to connect and share that information because that is powerful. If you're selling a widget, you cannot focus just on the widget because there are gazillion widgets. I'm like, why does Apple focus on the ecosystem of the iPhone because it's ease of use, connected everywhere, it works, 
is beautiful, is pretty. And then what does the other, the competition goes? Flexibility. I could do all these other things. So each one tried to look for the message. And at one point in time, it will resonate. And that's why they keep and they have different ways of connecting with them so it can help them. I want to give another example. You see this right here? Yeah. Okay. That's an iron pill. Okay. All right. So I shared that because for those of us who aren't techie, that might be selling techie or whatever, or more selling a solution, like um, a, a fix for solution. So this weekend I was in my painting studio and I got really dizzy. Like I thought I was going to faint Carlos. Right. Mm -hmm. So my husband had asked me, are you taking your iron pills? So let's say we have a health and wellness coach who's like, I've got, I want to help people feel better. Mm -hmm. Then um, if she just, she or he came out and said, Hey, I want you to, you know, get this vitamin supplement because it's going to help you this. And they jump right into that. It's probably not going to compel me because I am terrible at taking vitamins religiously. However, if they hit me straight on and say, do you feel like you're waking up without um, feeling like you slept at all? You know, are there days when you want to be with your family and do an outing, but you just have no energy to go and do it? Mm -hmm. That is tailoring the message to reach right into my pain and say, yes, because it was so frustrating. Kurt took me out on a little date after he's like, you're dizzy. Let's go to um, the restaurant up at Hickory. Right. And um, it was very, very difficult because I was dizzy. And I last night I literally organized all my supplements and I was like, OK, so again, that's tailoring the message, even what season they're in. So I think we have to dissect like what phase of life they're in, what phase of season they're in. You know, we all hear about what keeps them up late at night, what's their concern or what's their driving passion. But um, it, it can be just as simple as one simple thing that can actually fix. So, you know, is there something in your body going on? One simple thing that could be tweaked that could help fatigue and dizziness. Well, wow, that's a call to action right there that I would want to read that article and then, you know, maybe talk to that coach who has the solution. Um, so I just wanted to kind of share that that little case study there. So that goes straight that. First, we need to understand what is what the person, where the person is, yep. what the they want, that is, mm -hmm. and then we need to look at, is there something that, like you said, that they're worried about? Some yes. people can call it concerns, some people could call it what they're looking for, and it's interesting because a concern, like you said, for one area of your life, could be one thing and for another it could be a completely different concern like i was listening this weekend um to a an audio that was recorded when there were tapes so that will date the time <laughs> and, and it was talking about how we have different areas and when we cut them into smaller pieces so we can focus and, and look at what is what is concerning us in each one of those areas of our life, we can work it out better. And I start thinking, you know, uh, sometimes you plan a big date, but one of the, the things that I remember that when Cynthia and I got together was that we like to do very simple things. And I started thinking, what about if I do the same thing for helping other people and the, my customers and different things? But I said, you know, how about if we go to one of the first places that we went for a date? So we decided to go to Brandsmart. That is a like a appliance and tech store. And you're going to say, wait, you went to a date there? And it was funny because um, I needed to buy, I don't know what it was uh, when we were dating. 
And when I mentioned it to Cynthia, she said, you know, why we don't go to Brandsmart? I said, sure, let's go. And she said, that is my favorite store because they have on the bottom, they have like all this kitchen things and all the appliances and all that kind of stuff. So we literally, we went Saturday and we just went to walk through a store. We just went to walk through a store and we were bringing back memories. And I said, okay, so one of our concerns was, okay, how do we keep what we had in the beginning so we keep building on it because if you probably have seen uh, some of the stuff that we do at night, we're working with a group um, of couples and people in Portuguese and we're sharing our experience and what we do. So we want to keep that in there. So thinking about that, we, we like, okay, so our desires to serve others, our concerns that we can keep building what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So we want to keep keeping, um, we want to keep looking for those experiences so we can keep sharing them to keep encouraging others. Do you see, we're, we're narrowing the target in that, for, for that area of our life that we're working on. And that's why we think that looking at that is critical for our success as business owners as entrepreneurs, as coaches, uh, could, you could be a pastor, whoever Leaders. is. To do you know, it. we're, we want, you know, we all have this leadership inside of us, Carlos. And, and I remember distinctly teaching 21 laws of leadership. And a lady was like, I'm not a leader. And I'm like, you are, you're either leading yourself or you're leading other people's. You're always a leader. So um, I think we get caught up in occupation, but it is about influence and the communication, it, you know, and we have, let's say we all have different seasons. There are, I was watching the movie Harriet Tubman last night and oh my goodness, it's such an inspiration to um, continue to be a warrior for my purpose, like she was for hers. But at a season in her life, even though she had, she went through different occupations, but there was the core work that she did. So I just want to encourage anyone who's listening and says, well, I don't know what my occupation is even right now, or I'm in a shift. The language that you use to tell yourself, and then also go back and watch the other videos that we've done, about finding your core passion and your superpower and those kind of things will help you bring forward. Carlos, I also wanted to let you know on the, the live stream there, I wanted to do a recap for those who are listening. You know, So number one is what may be their concern? Number two is what language are you using to address their current worry, concern, or situation? Number three, bring the emotion forward from their feelings and speak directly to that. Um, I believe on uh, when we teach on Wednesday, what mm -hmm. we can do is why, why don't we compound off of this and do about how to write the pickup line specifically, like what could be three step formula on how to write it in, you know, uh, they always say the best slogan is between three and seven words. So maybe we could craft that a little bit, kind of get their juices flowing to write down in their journal, if that sounds good to you. That would be good. And before we finish, just want to ask my friends, think about the, the people that you really want to serve. And we keep doing this to serve you guys that are watching this, that know us, do business with us, interact with us. What are some of the concerns that the people that you serve or that you want to serve, what are some of their concerns? What are some of the things that when you talk to them, that's why we put it, what is your pickup line? Because right there, when you connect with them, that first pickup line, some people call it elevator spe speech, other people call it so many other ways. What could be some of that that actually can help you connect 
with them. And when you find that out, then look around your area. Is there someone else serving that need? And that's fine. Because remember, someone else may try to serve their need. Doesn't mean that you can't. It means that you have to do it in your way. And people will interact with you in a different way than someone else. And when you can answer that question, that will be powerful because then you can then start narrowing down, okay, what is your concern? I can work in a lot of stuff, but I could not work in a lot of stuff every day. I need to be a specialist because specialized knowledge mm -hmm. is going to help you be successful. I know how to do web pages. It's not something that is my passion. I know when there's a problem, what it is, because I can pick it up right away. I can troubleshoot a network. I can help somebody build a strategy for their company. But what is what is their concern? What 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 is their problem that they really need help on? Yeah. So you can then come from there and say, okay, here is how I can help you with. You know, Carlos, um, I I actually still have the the a portion of the web that somebody does for me, but you know, Kurt and I owned, um, well, I owned it, but Kurt was like the pillar, I think on operations and things like that as far as helping me really discern how to grow the company. But we owned a web strategy company, web development for, for years. So I came to the level of being like a heart surgeon of saying, okay, how do we pull that kind of I think that we lost you, Trish. Trish, are you there with us? Well, my friends, I think that we lost Trish. Um, and we're at the 20 minute mark. But my friends, like I was saying, make sure that you know what is their concern. So when we help you craft your pickup line, you can then connect with them in a better way and help them meet their need, meet their expectations, and make their desires a reality. My friends, as always, share this video with your friends, connect with us in our group, Digital Marketing Strategies Secret Reveal, and we will see you on our next video.